Nerfcast! Slurpcast TV. You know the players. Before we get into that, um, sometimes I begin with something uplifting, something to remind you that there is still good out there in the world. A great philosopher once said, money can't buy happiness. It can buy a yacht big enough, though, to drive right up alongside happiness. David Lee Roth. <laughs> Today we talk about Feast of the Goblin King Blood Bowl Tournament. Already trying to get the record for longest Blood Bowl Tournament name. Um, it's not a, is there a, a proper beer on abbreviation of this you've seen? I, all I know is if, even if you have no other tabs open, if you click on the link, it won't fit in the tab on the top. <laughs> I think you got to have a more like kind of condensed kind of name there. Um, is that was that like a con of the same name? Is that what they were attached to, or what was the like? What was the? I don't know. The guy, the guy running it, played goblins. Really cool guy, by the way. Um, yeah. Uh, we was it the first time you met him? Was at Dungeon Bowl at Adepticon? Yeah. Well, yeah. I theoretically I met him at Chaos Cup. Well, because you, everyone knows who Mike. Were. Yeah. So I'm if Alan, if you're listening, I'm sorry. I don't really remember you from. Uh, past cup but i'm sure i met you there so. I, I knew he was a good guy and yeah because I, I was an observer at the dungeon bowl um, yeah at a dungeon if, if, he played he, all halflings he didn't do any of that mixing it up stuff he just played pure and i respect they do it yeah. if you meet somebody at chaos cup and they're all wearing masks you get a pass like you don't like i don't remember anybody because they yeah. all have masks on. so it's like didn't even happen you don't have to do the whole i'm sorry business mike yeah I I think the tournament name is a reference to Labyrinth and the Goblin King. Oh, okay. mm. never saw it. I'll be honest. David Bowie played the Goblin. Yeah, King. I've seen yeah. bits of it. David Bowie does not look much like a goblin, though. No, he's too pretty. He looks more he's like more a more like an elf, a little I mean, or a fae creature, maybe. Yeah. Do goblins come in all shapes and sizes? No, they are healthy at any weight, though. I know that. Yes. Yeah. So this is a Blood Bowl tournament. NAF approved tournament it will go on your permanent record beer on and that's not good in bloomington illinois uh dare i say without slurp cast there this is a dud uh it would be five players yeah is five a dud i don't know extreme you posted many it wouldn't, well because the odd man out wouldn't play so we've been four four that's I, the bare minimum. That's you called need for league a tournament. night. That's not called a tournament. <laughs> I posted some duds, and I think I could say without Zorpcast, this would have been another dud. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. So I'm going to say the words, and um, hey, we saved the, the tournament. There's no shame in that. All right. Right. honestly, that's a good thing. I'll explain why. And again, if you're watching this, it's not an insult. It's saying that when you do the whole thing of, and we, we've done this joke before, this kind of you know, who's on first routine. Um, I didn't go because nobody was playing. Yep. Nobody was playing because nobody went. Well, I didn't go because no one was playing. Well, yeah, but nobody came. That's why nobody played. This tells you that that equation needs you. That's what that's what that's all about. So without uh, Valdrick, Baron, and Extreme, there would have only been five down to four players, barely enough. So if you're watching this and saying, you know, Apparently these Lurpcast fuckheads are starting to talk about Blood Bowl again. Mm -hmm. Where do they get off? Um, here's where we get off uh, on your face because it means you need to go to things in order to have things to go to. And he was uh, depending on a lot of his league players to show up and they bailed. Uh, All the local, like a lot of the locals. Yeah. Did. And that's yeah. always the case. Always. Yeah. Always. So I mean, sort of people won. I was expecting a lot more people than I ended up. I only ended up with eight. So it's the same as Peace of the Goblin King. Is it fair to say, I mean, I know people play tournaments and leagues, but is it fair to say that you generally pick your choice and that has an impact on whether you attend one or the other? I think a lot of times people that only play in leagues are like, 
afraid to go to their first tournament because that's like serious stuff or or and it's multiple games in a day rather than the one a night they're used to like the length of time might scare i mean i think some of it could be the i you know the wife only lets me out on tuesdays right you know, that kind of thing i'm not allowed to have fun on the weekends with my friends yeah for the local people especially the saturday is too easy to just say oh i've got the yeah, lawn the or the kids got something or whatever so i say don't you want an excuse to get out of that stuff yep right don't you want to be able to say honey i wouldn't go but alan is counting on me and i promise yeah. it's i think it's easier to get out of it if you're local but you know if you're actually driving two hours you're like you've made a plan ahead of time and you're committed to that so yeah i mean for years uh you know mike extreme and myself went to blood bowl tournaments i don't think mike were you in a lot of leagues at that time or no yeah oh you okay you still were um i i wasn't really um i kind of stopped league play in the maybe later 2000s um extreme you weren't really playing leagues right no, because there weren't really any leagues to play, and I wasn't interested in running one. And tournaments appealed to me a lot more than leagues. Yeah, I, I found that, um, like, I just didn't get the same. Even if I lost and did poorly at a tournament, there's still a level of, I don't want to say the word enjoyment, because you know, if you lose every game, or whatever. But there's a level of uh, what I'm looking for in this game that happens at tournaments that doesn't happen in leagues for me. I don't know why that leagues just annoy me. Like the whole, the scheduling of games, the um, arguing about how it should be run, um, why it takes a tired league for my guy to get a skill, and then we start over. It's just a, it's on paper, it should seem like a league is a fucking blast. But it just, for me, it never is. So I, I just bow out, you know. I, I, if I started a league and it was game one, I would have had miserable time game two because I had a lot of dead guys. And my ability to roll on injury charts are bad. Yeah. Not as many dead guys as I got with Brian's in game three, but we'll get to that. What were you saying, Mike? I enjoy leagues, but I enjoy, when I'm in a league, I'm committed to the long, the long game where I am not looking to like win this next game. I'm looking to build superstars in my roster and you're going for the SPP instead of the win. You know yeah. what's weird? That's one one of the main reasons I don't like leagues because I thought we you play to win the game. The like if you had a level of player, you'd be careful with them because you don't want them to die. Yeah, sure. and, uh, and there's also the like I'm going to do dumb shit because I want star player points and I don't care about winning. If you don't care about winning, why the fuck are we doing this? Well, you still got to get in the playoffs, so you got to win. No, Mike, uh, you're you also got game. to. If you're playing the long game, Mike, you can say this whole season's a fucking wash. It's a rebuilding season. Yeah, that, there's there's leagues that ha that happens where it's like, yeah, this, there is, but this one's not for me. It's like, dude, you want to go somewhere every week just to fucking waste time? Because that's what it is. Dude. I'm not wasting time. I'm I did XP my like team in a... and I make the fucking playoffs every every season. So it's like playing an RPG. Mike Mike is grinding on some low level mobs to build up his characters. Yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes what happens is you just you want to switch teams, though, and all of a sudden all this build up goes to waste. You know? Well, I mean, I don't know. It's a different discussion, but yeah. My point with that is going to tournaments again. Abira, you've now been to two NAF tournaments, yep. um, and you're seeing kind of the way things are done. You're seeing the just the the style of the games, um, the people you interact with, all the little mannerisms, the handshake, and and I did it wrong things. again, by the way. That, no, there's no wrong. There's no was wrong. It under way. the table? No, it was at the wrong point. Yeah. Wrong time frame. Yeah. No, I think Mike's right. I think it's one person pulls their dick out, the other person puts the hand up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's. You just grab the finger. It's well, because finger. you know, it's a for COVID protocols. That's safe. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm probably not going to get COVID from your dick. I'll get other things. Yeah. Probably just fucking cheese, you know, beer on you especially, but um, not COVID. So. I'd be, I'd, but it'd be gross at Chaos Cup because you could have a European and it's going to have that lump of flesh on the tip. You don't want that. Yeah. 
That's interesting because it's, you know, I mean, well, it does provide you a different experience at a tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. It's almost right. like a cheese shield, too. Yeah. So. But you can get smegma build up underneath it. Yeah. <laughs> smegma. One of my favorite words. New, new team name, smegma. Yeah. yeah. Let's see a good Nurgle team name. Smegma All Stars, possibly. Um, so tell me about uh, the tournament. Uh, whoever wants to kind of take it. Um, getting there, showing up. How did it look? How did it go from there? Well, let's start at the beginning. I got up at like five in the morning to the shower and everything. And then I went to go pick up Mike and we're headed there. And Mike, I didn't know this uh, place existed. We were about 75% of the way there. What's that? Wally's is it? Wally's. Yeah. Wally's is what like, I don't know if you know of uh, what is the, is it Bucky's is the Bucky's. Yeah. It's an imitation of Bucky's. So I'm, I'm wondering if this is going to be the North of the Mason Dixon line, Bucky's gas mm. station slash everything you could want in a grocery store. But we stopped there and I had a, uh, a brisket breakfast taco and it was delicious so i knew yeah, it really was ahead. okay but yeah we get there and uh the shop actually opened before their normal opening time which i thought was a nice touch hmm. it was <clears throat> and uh a- as expected we had to provide paper proof of doc of our vaccination status hmm. no pictures on your phone so uh store policy a tournament policy Store policy for it, not to shop, but if you're doing an event. That's weird. And that store policy was enacted over a year ago and they haven't changed it at all. So hashtag you science. Know, like I'm running a tournament and um, I'm waiting for someone to ask me, you know what I'm going to say? I don't, I don't have to say things that aren't that like, it's like, why do I have to say something's not something? I was never told something is, so why do I have to say it isn't? But that's the kind of time we're in now. But it goes, do I have to be vaccinated? And I would say, that's none of my goddamn business. I would say, news to me. I haven't heard anything. Um, So that was required for uh, organized events in the store. What about like like a pickup game? Yeah, I don't know. Like he, it was, he did it at the, at the cash wrap area. Yeah. Um, so it's not like they were guarding the entrance to the basement where all the tables were. Oh, know. so it's not a, you can't go to the basement without one? Right. But I there think, like, locals, ha- he has a file on the locals. So if you've already been there a bunch of times, he knows on your file, he'll notate, you know, your personal medical history. The whole thing is just illogical. It doesn't make sense because the shopping area was more crowded than downstairs yes. in the play area. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I'm walking around with people that haven't had their cards checked, but I have to have my card checked to go downstairs and play with. Right. I was going to try the chicken finger defense, where if I have a chicken finger in my mouth, I don't have to wear a mask, but there were no masks, so that didn't work. <laughs> I mean, you know, is it called the chicken finger defense? That's what I call it. I don't know if there's an official name for it. Okay. I'm hoping for an official name. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so the store is in a very like if you almost every college town has the town square where it's like you got the court building in the middle and all the stores are on the outside so it's got a very college town feel like imagine a nice college town with a little bit of rockford sneak snuck in there <laughs> that was a really nice store though i, I really like yeah. the store uh, they, yeah, I, it had, I, I did as well yeah it had quite a mishmash of stuff yeah. um the 40k and gw was at the back um, not behind a beaded curtain, but just just happened to be yeah. like that. Um, and unlike our local store, they actually got the new Blood Bowl releases in time. Mm. So Mike and uh, Brian here scooped up the Spike magazines and bought them out before mm-hmm. I got there. Yeah, because uh, they got allocated only two of everything. You didn't say uh, we, we offered didn't... one to oh, okay. you. Yeah, you did. It's but more. Fun. I didn't. No, no, Mike did. I I didn't. Now playing the victim is yeah. way more fun. So I yeah. get. But then uh, 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 Alan asked, like, t- uh, price support because it was uh, it was what twenty bucks to get in for the tournament, twenty dollar buy in, I think. Yeah. Sure, I don't remember. They do do the five dollar <laughs> table time there though, which I so that so it's fifteen dollars plus the table time is what you pay, and all that went in and uh, for price support was all of the new Blood Bowl releases. So the team, the pitch, the dice, and cards, cards. Uh, so you guys get there at like what eight? Ten. Ten. Oh, ten. we got there almost, almost exactly. On, yeah, we got there uh, almost exactly on time. It was nine. Yeah. 
Yeah, because it was nine thirty was the check in. I'll, I'll tell you that. Yeah, you're I, right. You're right. It was nine. Yeah. I actually like later start times now because the likelihood of being able to drive up should be there for people. We, you know, back in the day, we would always look at tournaments and we want to be like, early as possible start. Like, and it's like that doesn't always make the most sense because. If you want to go, and especially, did you guys Iron Man it? Oh yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. And I lost, I lost an hour going back, so I was yeah. happy with the early start time because I didn't get home till like midnight. Was it three games now or four? Three, three. three. Oh, still midnight, huh? Yeah. Well, it well we ate dinner after. Yeah, we had dinner, and it took forever to get our food. It did, but it was good food. It, it was really good. was, but I was really fucking hungry, so, so I think hunger is the best sauce. Yes, it is. But it was surprisingly good. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't be a Blood Bowl tournament unless there was a problem getting food uh, afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's become sort of... And the waitress was awesome and angry at the same time. Oh, she, she walked with a stomping foot. Oh, my <laughs> God. I was... I love that. You could tell she was mad. Yeah, she was like 110 pounds, but she walked like a 200-pound person, and yep. it was awesome. She was clearly the only waitress for the whole place. Yes, so she and was, we did not give us, she did not charge us for drinks. It was prompt and refills. Yes. And it was prompt and refills, and that was worth a $10 tip easy. So, well, I mean, look at you guys. Obviously, she's going to be nice to you. Look like, you're you. not well, yeah. college kids. You guys have some money. Yeah. yeah. She's like, you guys, you might guys might know my dad. So I want to be nice <laughs> <Yeah>. to you. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to pay you $20. So, whatever that bill is, you're going to get the rest. So, yep. not the drinks. bill was like, nine bucks yeah it was nine bucks and i'm like i'm going to give you 20 and yeah. keep that 11 i don't care uh so tell me about the uh you what teams you brought and how your games went uh, i brought i brought wood elves um a pretty standard list just with the tree man no star players or anything because it's really hard to get star players in a wood elf list at the tier one or whatever but i'm not complaining because wood elves are pretty great um You're, you already have star players you yeah think? yeah Fuck those you know, guys. One thrower, two catchers, two uh, war dancers, and a tree man. And if Brian could have picked his schedule of games, uh, I think he would have come up with pretty similar to what he ended up with. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got I got the the perfect tournament. So who did you play? Uh, game one is got Mike. So we both plopped. Yep. Um, well, you plopped. I plopped. Um. Uh, game two was against their league champ. Nurgle player. Okay. And game three was against Brian. Was it one of those where, like, you know, we've talked about this before, where now it's an uncomfortable ride home because of, you know, problems in that game. And then now you two are arguing on the ride home. No, our game was great. (laughs) So game one against Bikes Halflings. um, And I thought, I got some protection on the line because I brought a tree man. But of course, going against three tree man. I brought three. Yeah. Tree man. At it was my point. first day playing half links. I don't, you know, obviously I don't have a lot of experience playing period. And this is my first time with Wood Elves ever. So I made some mistakes um, and throw teammate worked about 75% of the time for Mike. Yeah. Um, and that's, that actually seemed pretty effective. And we ended up tying. Um, two to two. Yep. Yeah, um, did, you, did you not keep anybody like in the back to prepare for that or no? I did, but I didn't know how effective it, like, cause he would set it up. So they were there. And then it would be on the next turn, so it'd be thrown, and then they could move. So I didn't take, I would even do a good job taking that into account. You assume he wouldn't land properly and just. You know, I didn't. I didn't even know how throw, throw teammate worked, to be honest. So. Okay. And he took all your re rolls away from you too. Yeah, yeah, I did do that. Yeah, yeah, I, I got I had three re rolls. Isn't it true you don't steal re rolls? You cause him to lose re rolls, and then you gain re rolls. Yes. But you're not stealing them. So in the first no, half, if you have one not, and I get three, I get three. So we're not yeah. stealing a monkey. We're liberating it. Right. <laughs> so I had three roll, three re rolls plus leader. Um. So in game in the first half, he took away two of my re rolls. In the second half, he took all three. But I yeah. still had my re roll from leader. Um. So you ended up with a tie though. Yep. It was a two two. Yeah, D2. D2 tie. Any casualties? Uh, yes. <laughs> Mostly got, in your half. Yes. <laughs> I got I got fouled a lot. Yeah. You got low armor. You got to expect it. Yep. 
coming. I had four sneaky gets, so yeah. you know that's a bonus blitz right there. And so. that was kind of the theme of the tournament going in, so I no right to complain about that. Yeah. Well, there's no right to complain about it regardless, Biron. Well, I, in my own, I would never complain out loud because I don't want to feel like a crybaby. But in my head, can and I could complain. And no. <laughs> But you know what? It was a, my first time play, playing Elves. I had to play Mike, so I got to ask him questions, and he's a very fair player. Like, you don't want to do that. You want to do this. Um, and I scored two touchdowns, which is the most I've ever scored in a Blood Bowl game. So. Get used to it, Wood Elf, man. Oh, man. You were not kidding about uh, word answers. Holy shit. Holy shit. Yeah, fuck those guys. It's, there's, there's a reason why when I got that guy down, I'm like, I'm going to foul. Yep. I'm going to – Throw all defense. I think by the end of the game, I had no positionals left. You know know what could happen? So I, years ago, playing Wood Elves, there was one game where I lost both my war dancers in turn one. One was on the kickoff from a blitz. Yep. So turn turn zero and then turn one. Um, So, I mean, that's rare, but it's one of those where all of your plans just go to shit. And that's when you have, you know, that miserable as fuck game. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you know, most of my the- positionals were taken out by this in the second half at some point. Um, yeah, which is fine. So, um, Mike, for, for skills, what did you give out for skills? Well, I, I I screwed up and I gave Juggernaut to my tree man because I didn't I forgot that. Yeah, that was a little only odd. on a blitz, and he's not going to be doing much of that. Uh, Mike is a proponent of Juggernaut, though. Probably not, no, on, not on a tree man. I, you you were very clear. You would love you love the Juggernaut on Minotaur. Well, on. Yeah. We'll put it this way. I knew it was going to go bad that on the – my kick to me in the very – in the beginning, of the game, I got the kick, and my tree man on the line caught it. Hey, that was awesome. That was fucking awesome. You know what? Go with it. I, I handed it off as soon as <laughs> – I – yeah. And, you know, I'm like, just hand it off. Hey, well, that was fine. Yeah, because the handoff – I didn't I didn't even know how handoffs worked. I thought it was <laughs> a, like a – I thought you had to pass, but no, it's just you have to do the reception, and that's it. Yeah, it handoffs is, is pretty much all anyone does. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, get those SPPs in that tree, man. Right, guys? Hey. Yeah, have them do okay, a long bomb. Get your hand off. No, I meant if you kept it with the tree man, like to. Yeah. Oh, yeah, to get the touchdown. Yeah. And my uh, tree man did almost nothing, but he actually did his job be- throughout the entire tournament because he was there to protect the Wood Elf linemen that have to be on the line and can't. Yeah. So, Mike. He didn't last very long in round three, though. No, he did not. He got, he got a, a death roller up his finger. Yeah. But no, you two games against Spring seven players, so that doesn't help. So yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun. So you you had what else, Baron? What were your skills? I don't think you uh, said. I had on my thrower, I had leader, and I forgot what else I took on him. Cannoneer, cannoneer, and leader. Uh, on one ward answer, I had strip ball, and another one I had sprint. Okay. Um, I got like, too pussy with the sprint. I never used it. Oh wow! Like if I made two two rushes or go for it, so I'd be like. That's enough. Same odds. What are you talking about? I know, but I think I think I may, got gun shy with Mike taking away all my rerolls. <laughs> Balls out. It's the only way to yeah. go. Uh, Mike, what did you sneaky get on a few? Four sneaky gets and the tree man and uh, sure feet on the halflings, on the catchers. And just so anyone knows, this tournament, if you had a, a tier three team, you got, you got a lot more skills you could give out. So halflings are tier three. What else are tier one, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, extreme, you brought dwarves. I did. What'd you take? A uh, guard. guard yeah. Lots of guard. <laughs> that didn't work well for me. That's what you do. That, that's I what you a, Just dodge your way. Dead, that's all I got to do. I had a death roller with no bribes. So that was interesting. <laughs> it didn't it matter in our game very much. much. No. So death roller with no bribes. If it's their ball, did you keep it on the bench then? Um, no, it was out the it, whole time. Yeah, I usually just start with it because no, no, I, no. I have enough faith in my defense that I'm, it's going to be a long half in the first half. You just figure, I'm just going to start with it no matter what because, because I mean, the thought would be, depending on who you're playing, like, should I plan to get it back and a better chance to use it? Mm. Yeah. But against Brian, I argued the call successfully twice. Once I got caught fouling and once to get kicked out of the game. Both times it worked. So that was awesome. like, I didn't even know you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew I knew about argue. I just didn't know how it worked. And I'm like, and you need what a six? Yeah. Yeah. We got it twice. So 
I think he, he didn't know it was an actual role. He thought you actually had to argue in the, like you. Yeah, you, you have to present your case to me. Right, you I have to go, be, all right, I agree. Like, judge, I'm going to argue the call. He's like, it's a, a giant a, bulldozer. That's not legal. Right. It's like, it's I'll a allow it. I want to argue the call, argue with you. Let's do so this. I, in game one, I think my word answer scored, scored both my touchdowns. Mike, did you score yeah. both of them on throw teammate, I think? Yeah. Yep. So that's as it should be. That's what you do. Um, both landings were good then, Mike? He, yeah. failed a, he failed a couple, I think. Yeah, but, yeah. I, I threw multiple times. But yeah. uh... In the new passing rules, can you – you still have fumble or inaccurate. Or they're yeah. always – Right. And wild, wild, or what is that called? Or wildly inaccurate or whatever. Yeah, wildly inaccurate. Yeah. Yeah, one is a fumble and it doesn't leave the square, right? Yeah. It stays where it is. That didn't happen. So that was your first game, Extreme. What was your first game all about? Uh, my first game, I played the tournament organizer. Um, he was playing. Oh, wait, can we go back to ours real quick? Sorry, Extreme. Uh, one, one thing I appreciate when playing Mike when it's an important role, he puts it down on the cup and then he peeks at it first. I like the, the tension building he does. With <laughs> and then I go, fuck. And then I go, yeah. yes. Uh, it, it's a fun thing. I like any kind of like mind game, poker yeah. face type stuff. I enjoy it. Yeah. I enjoy it a lot. <laughs> yeah. about, Extreme has the, he walks away. Yeah. When, I, when I had a league and it was an important rule, I would take a peek at it, but then I would put the cup down and just walk away. That's how they do. Yeah. And then whoever you're playing said, fine, and then crunched all your models together <laughs> and pushed it to your dugout. Your go. Uh, so Extreme, your first game was against the organizer. Yes, and he was playing goblins. So it um, wasn't a great match up there, dwarves against goblins. The only um, goblin player in the goblin tournament. Yes, yeah. But he had uh, some of the new goblin tricky stuff, I guess, the doom diver and things. But I was able to uh, work the matchup and handle them pretty well. I had ever, a lot of casualties. You ever wonder in those kind of games, like, because you know you're just going to say, I trust you. You ever wonder, like, people get stuff wrong, but you're never going to know? Yeah, I mean, it, it happens if you don't know and you trust I them. don't know. Well, I, I like that Extreme told us, keep an eye out for the Snotling player because this is the rule for swarming or whatever. So what was the final score of your first game? Uh, two to zero. And I, I had a bunch of casualties. I don't know, over six, six or so. <laughs> Would you have won? Well, we'll get to the awards later. Um, but uh, you got six casualties in there, racking them up. Yep. Definitely a case of who did you get to play to get those casualties. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's not a good matchup for him, and I don't. But guys, I, he played it. He he was he had the proper mindset as a, as a both a um, odd man out and terminal organizer just there to have fun. Win your own trophy. Yeah, don't, don't don't do a star alone. Didn't Jeffro do that at his thing too or no? Uh, no, he ended up not winning though. I think because yeah. he did, they were doing that phantom ball bullshit and got screwed by it twice. Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, so game two, what do we got? Game two, I played the their league champ, who was a Nurgle player. Okay. Um, so my first time playing Nurgle, of course, that's not saying much. I haven't played many teams overall. Um, the I learned that tentacle arms are a pain in the ass or whatever. That yep. For moving. Um, but I also learned that the frightful pre the thing that makes you a negative to pass, you could ignore that if you just pass before you get close to them. Um, that was my first. That was a, I. I did quite. A, I did it like. Both of my touchdowns were on passes. Um, Does the disturbing presence affect handoffs? Yes. Okay. Um, so, Biron, you won that game? Yeah, I won uh, 3-0. Yeah. Nice. Once his octopus grip failed on my uh, my award answer, he just ran down the field and I passed to him for an even touchdown. First tournament win or no? Yes. Ever? I both my first tournament tie and win. So your first tournament, you had all losses? Yes. Wow. And you still, you didn't quit? No. You didn't go to the, the NAF council and say. Well, well, the first loss was against Mike. And they were because I was doing really dumb stuff didn't help me either. I'm like, I don't want my Crocs score to throw. And then I picked well, up the ball finally. And he and does, as yeah. we all know, 
when you switch teams like races, it starts over anyway. So yeah. It didn't even count. So yeah, I, I and I I think the Nurgle guy was like kind of surprised. And I'm like, yeah, it's the first time I've ever played Wood Elves. And he's like, oh. He's like, don't tell me that, you asshole. <laughs> I guess I don't know not to pass with all that disturbing presence. So yeah. <laughs> uh Mike, what about your game? I played uh, an ogre player named uh, Braden, and he's from Springfield. So I'm guessing that at least four of the eight people were not local. And uh, it was a 1 1 tie. I pulled some bullshit on turn 16 to throw a halfling to tie it up, which I do. And uh, it was a good game, though. He's a good guy. So the uh, uh, ogre team is what? It's four ogres, and then was it Noblars? It was yes, yeah, four ogres and I four or five. Called, are they? I think it was four ogres. Yeah, three regular and one of the runt hunters. Is it and... normal to not max out at six in that team? But this was a lower team value, so I don't know if he could have afforded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, you mean the to build? Like yeah. Okay. I just always assumed you'd go straight for the six and then fill with the snots, but yeah. Well, now I think all ogre coaches feel like they have to have the righteous rookies too. So you have to pay for that and then your ogres and re rolls. Yeah. So I'm so not into any inducements pretty much of any kind. So um, I just, just fucking play. Any star fell. players that, that you played against, Mike, in that game? I don't remember. So no. But it was totally his game until turn 16 when I pulled the bullshit. Pulled and it, yeah. yeah. I mean, to be fair, as an ogre player, he can pull bullshit too. So oh yeah, bullshit against bullshit. He uh, because he was doing the he wasn't like he was like oh this is shitty. And I was like what you can you can pass with a snotling to here and boom 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 and they do a handoff and that's what he did and it worked. So, oh, Coach Mike, look at that. Yeah, well I was like well you know plus one sportsmanship right there. I'm not. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not so shit, you don't get the minus one to pass anymore. So fuck it, you might as well. Man, fuck helping. We're too old for that shit. <laughs> we'll talk afterwards, post game. But uh, yeah. post game, you could have done this. Yeah. And be like, oh, yeah. that's rough, man. All right, my turn. <laughs> so, what you do? Can't wait to get back to my turn. Uh, Extreme, you are round two. My round two was against. Uh, it was my first game against Imperial Nobility. Mm. Um, this so is the colorblind handicap game. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I had to remember all the skills they start with and which positions they start with and then recognize which models were which. And so, yeah, I was uh, thinking overtime on that one just to get through the game. Was uh, Did he use the uh, GW team? Yeah. 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 So on that team, are they easy? Like the bodyguards, are they bigger? Yeah, the bodyguards are bigger. Yeah. The bodyguards are pretty easy to recognize. And he had... Um, some of his other stuff, but like all the feathers were different colors. So that's, that's how he did the skills was colors on the feathers. Yeah. So the bodyguard guys, you got to know, because they have stand firm, right? And then and three, three of them had guard. That was my biggest concern. Oh, okay. So, but then the stand firm and fin on the team, I had to remember who had fin, who had stand firm. Yeah. Do the runners have sidestep too? Or? I think so, but I don't think he had any. I'm not sure. Oh, he didn't have anybody with sidestep. I don't know if they come. I, I, could, I could be wrong on that. I thought they came. I thought it was like when I first looked at that team, they had all the skills that I would give to people to annoy people. Um, yeah. Besides guard, but like stand firm, sidestep, fend. Those they, are have, they have some wrestle too. That's... Oh, right. Maybe wrestles when I'm, maybe not sidestep. Maybe it's wrestle, whatever. So, um, so that was pretty annoying as a dwarf team. But... Yeah, I bet. Uh, so um that game you were thinking a lot trying to focus on things did that disrupt your play style at all no it just made me work harder um it, i ended up tying the game one one but i failed a dodge to score on turn 16 but i wasn't really upset about that because i realized that the turn before i made positioning errors where i wouldn't have had to make that dodge that on turn 15 i played it correctly so oh so you're saying you fucked up a turn before so you know, in a sense, yeah. you, you deserve to fail the role. Well, I didn't deserve to. I mean, it's still a three plus. I should I pass that. I could check with Nuffle, but I think he's going to say, or she will say, you deserve. Okay. Uh, Accept uh, So that ended up being a tie then. Yep. Okay. 
So at this point, two rounds. And then in. we did we break for lunch after the first game or the second game? First game. So we broke for lunch, and there was some. It, for people that don't know, it's the town where uh, Illinois State University is at. So we go out to the town square, and it was just mobbed with everyone with identical like pep rally s t shirts on, going to every bar. It was like noon. There was yeah, it was taking lines outside the bars. <laughs> So that was weird. It was like, Saturday, but still, yeah. I was like, guys, this guys bar for is like, hopping for 12 o'clock on a Saturday. Yep. And Beer Ryan and then, said, uh, then, how, do, how do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> fellow yeah, kids. Just, to admit, fellow. just to point out how old all of us are, we're like, man, that music is really loud coming out of there. I yeah. Turn yeah. it down. <laughs> <laughs> and even at the bar at dinner, it was still like, yeah. they were yeah, blasting the music at the bar at dinner, even though there was no one, it wasn't that crowded and no one was like, partying or dancing or anything yeah whatever did you guys order like drink drinks at dinner or no no well then guess what they don't give a fuck about you yeah <laughs> it's not for you our skinny it's... towny waitress cared about us i think you're long forgotten but we had uh we went did a, a italian beef hot dog place where we had lunch okay. windy yeah. city wieners windy city wieners yep. hmm. they were good that's a cool blood bowl it's the team name mm -hmm. it is yeah. Uh, so that was after round one because you started, you know, it was a little later yeah. in the morning to start. So round one, which is typical of later start mm -hmm. tournaments to have lunch or, you know, after game one, uh, you get back, you play your round two. At this point, extreme, you are, you have a win and a tie, right? Um, Biron, you have a tie and a win mm -hmm. together. And Mike, you have two ties. Two ties. We know what G-Dub says about ties. We don't, we don't, yeah. he doesn't like them. Yeah. No. But none of us had lost a game yet. Nope. Undefeated at that point. But it 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 was destined to not end that way. Yes. Well, in a well it wasn't destined. You could have tied. Right? We could have. So yeah. in a tournament with eight coaches, um, you were bound to all play each other. Well, Mike and Extreme did not, right? Correct. No. We haven't played each other since 2015. I looked that up on the NAF site. It's a long time ago. It, it is isn't that long ago because if you consider that, like, I think you have to say not since 2015, but how many tournaments ago? Yeah, is the better gauge. But that's before 2016 when the new rules came out. So that was in the age of the dinosaurs. So. Dinosaur, yeah, yeah, uh, prehistoric. Uh, very much, you know. You guys are the dinosaurs of the game. You know, hey, three-digit NAF number. I'm just saying. You know, mine, is, the, first, mine is the. The my nap number is so high, it's like I'm a I'm a newbie. You're yeah. a, Mike, what was the first dinosaur? The first dinosaur? The first one. Bob. That's a good question. I don't know if we know for sure. I'm going uh Brachiosaurus. I don't know. No, God, no. That's God, that's God no. Oh god, no, that's Jurassic, ball. man. <laughs> Who's the first dinosaur? Because I'm him. Um so uh final round, the championship round. Now, Biron versus Extreme, was this the called the top table it or was, was it just the whatever table. we're gonna add up points later? It was the top table. I asked the I asked the organizer, I go, is this top table? He's like, like as in no matter what, whoever no. wins this game wins the tournament. Yeah. No. Yes. No, it was done, it was points. Okay, that's what I'm at. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Okay. So had we tied so if, if had we tied, point. neither of us probably would have won. Well, because there are times where, depending on how the scoring set up, this is another episode for another time, but depending on how the scoring set up, theoretically, one could win on um, a top table, but not win the tournament because of bonus points and somebody yep. else that was close mm -hmm. winning. You know, I won yeah. six nothing and six casualties nothing. You won one nothing, but we were only a difference of five right. before that. So. that. That almost happened here. Okay. Which, yeah, if, we, if we both, if we tied, I would actually have finished above extreme on touchdowns, but he would have finished far above me on casualties. Here's the thing. Cyber. In a three game tournament, I don't give a fuck. I, I prefer points because there's not enough data to go on to actually say that. Yeah. In your two day tournaments. Yeah. You really should say, this is it. Like this is, the, you know, just to make that clear, but in a three game tournament, you yeah. get what you get. It's, it's, I will say three game tournaments. You have your skill, you have luck, you have matchups, the, oh, the three things that go into any game. Then you also have just luck of the draw. 
who who do I get? Because Extreme played goblins. You know, he did well, but you know, somebody else, if I had to play three, I played dwarf, I played chaos, I played Nurgle, well, I'm not getting any casualties. You know, so there is that that goes in. Three game tournaments, as we all know, it's a tournament, but you're you're gonna have fun because it's a you know, a lot of variables. With that said, not to take anything away from the results, but I wanted to make that clear that Biron versus Extreme, you're still playing for points. You're still trying to get bonus points, right? Yep. Um, how did this game go? Biron I think, from two, I think I think two wins and a tie would guarantee victory, though, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. No, because what did the second place guy end up with? Two wins and a tie. Two wins and a tie. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that after the game. Yeah. Okay. So, Biron, you line up against Extreme. Are, were you obviously you know him from right. the show? I've never he, played him in Blood Bowl. Never played him in Blood Bowl. Um, is it safe to say? Well, I'm trying to think. What's been your competitive knowledge of Extreme up until that point? That he is a serious competitor, more serious than probably me, and probably more serious than Mike. Oh yeah, but he not an asshole he's not a slow player which is the main thing i look for is it oh yeah definitely not um and slow is, the, slow is one of the worst traits yeah if not the worst yeah i mean if the guy is just like all like total prick that's probably the worst yeah but well yeah slow is really close because especially just, especially if you're good and slow that right. is the worst it's like you're dragging you're it out yeah, you're just beating the hell out of somebody and making it last as long as possible. Like, I'm going to count out the squares. I'm going to put a little die there. Yeah. Or save that spot. Give me, just give me a second. I'm going to just... It's like, fuck that. Fast and bad. You're up for nothing. Yeah. 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 Fast and bad is the way to do it. Uh, so, Biron, you line up. You're like, all right. I'm going to be fun. <clears throat> My friend, did you go in thinking I'm probably going to lose? Yes. But I went in every game thinking that. But if, if I – so, like, game one, you're going to play Mike. You're going to play the league champion, their league champion, Nurgle, and two and extreme. I go, I would say the most likely I'm going to lose is first to extreme, second to Mike, and third to the guy. Because, you know, we're big city guys. We're not used yeah, to – Yeah, but I'm also playing guys. halflings. Yeah. But I've never – this is the first uh, time I've ever tied you. No, I'm, I'm not going to buy that one, Mike. That's a trap. That – that fucking bullshit about what teams you play as a, but I play halflings. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. You had three tree men, one's a star player. But not just that, but also there is so much pressure to beat a halfling team that the the pressure overcomes you. And it's like, I don't want to hear that I'm only playing halflings. There's a level of uh, intangible that goes on when you play against halflings. Like, how could I even fucking face myself? Before this tournament, the only wins I ha- I've had in Blood Bowl was against Todd, and we only played a half. Yeah. So yeah, to- Todd's players. the guy who brought, like, Blood Bowl models to a Dread Ball League. Yeah. Like, that's what you're going to get when you play Todd in this game. He gives that's- less than zero fucks in sports games. Yeah. And then Dean, because he just could not pick up the ball. Yeah, he was playing. Yeah, he got he got he, dice. That's why I won. Dean had Kemry back then too. Yeah, yeah Kemry. Yeah, so that's the, they're yeah garbage anyway. And I thought Todd knew what he was doing because he was playing vampires, and it turns out he did not. No, the worst, the worst pick for him. He should have actually brought his dreadball team. Yeah, he should have. Yeah. Corporate would have done fine. So yeah, he should have brought them. Um, so Biron, you line up. Um, what is your tactic and, and i'm extreme i'm gonna have you talk about the actual game but what's your opening like what are you gonna try for because you learned some stuff mm-hmm. you, before the tournament we all talked and you know i played what else i might we all kind of gave you some advice um and then you had two games already did you already go in with like a i have a strategy i'm gonna try to do something or were you just more i'm gonna do my best but without an any actual I, where I, I go well i'm gonna try to pass it and get and just outrun them and score touchdowns um one thing i failed to do in all three games is protect my players like when you you go and grab the ball and say okay what's next no it was uh i didn't di- i like i went to mark his players more often than i should have and brian pointed that out to me after the fact that was my big weakness oh you're basically playing his style is that what yeah you're i was pl- i was playing like i'm playing a normal team not a super delicate team. yeah instead of like let him come to you kind of thing yeah like in the beginning, I knew I'm like, all right, I'm setting up defense. I'm going to make sure that 
aside from my line, he has to blitz to hit me. And if he does, he's get a hit alignment, not one of my positions. So like with what else with me, I always did the, like the loose half cage, if you will. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't want to waste so many players doing that bullshit. I'm not, I'm not there to waste players, but if I grab a sideline and I give you like, just a, like a low hanging scrotum of a half yeah. cage where it's just kind of like blob, like blobbing around the side and I'm only wasting three dudes. It's like, you know what? You're probably not going to, if you do, it's bullshit and you earned it, I guess, yeah. but you're probably not. And that oh, no, way- I, not once did I build a cage. I always went for the quick score. I didn't build oh. it up. I was like, I got the ball. I'm going to go with Barrett as fast as I can. Yeah. And you know what? If you have a war dancer doing it, yeah. I would yeah. say you're going to be fine most of the time until you're not. Be, yeah. be nice until it's time to not be, not nice. be nice. And we'll tell you. Um, so, uh, But again, and I had this problem in, in not so much in my second game, but in my game against Mike, again, with Brian, where I was doing okay. And then by the second half, I have six players. Yeah. And I rolled poorly to get my guys that were just knocked out back in. Did you have any uh, extras or did you have 11? I had 11. Oh, man. I'm, I'm, I'm getting more into the 12 player business that I, I didn't used to in my younger days. Yeah. I'm getting more into it. I probably like, I think I've been better served if I t- took an extra and one less reroll, especially since Mike took all my. Yeah, since I took them all. Yeah. And I took leader, so I'd always get that one. And I put put it on my on my thrower because I know I wasn't going to be mixing him up in the business. Leader is still a passing skill, right? Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. That's pretty standard. Um, but they gave the, me the pro tip of always use that one first. Yep. But That's my the, my thrower, I did I did a good job never getting my thrower mixed up in the mess. He always survived. Quick yeah. side note: uh, Am I making this up? Maybe I dreamt it. Was there like a, a movement to like outlaw leader for a while? Yeah, that was extreme. Oh, okay. Maybe I didn't, I didn't dream it. It really happened. I still stand by it. There's stand, a re- do, you by, do you think you stand by too many things, by the way? Maybe. At a certain point, just sit. Don't stand <laughs> by <laughs> anything. Just sit, sit down. Just, just sit down and relax. Just sit down and let it happen. Was your goal Let's to make sure I didn't have a single reroll in the second half against Mike? Was that your goal? Would that have made you happy? No, I mean, I, there's a you set out in theory to design the team and the game, and each team has different reroll prices, but then leader breaks that whole thing, especially for like undead. Undead have very expensive rerolls because they have a great team. But now they have access to a very cheap reroll by a skill in the tournament that's just given to you. They don't have ac- They don't have access to throwing skills. No, but they take it on a, a doubles or uh, second. He's area. talking about those tournaments where you get like a free doubles, and it's like, well, what else am I going to take it on? I guess a mummy with block. I don't block, know. Yeah, it's you know. Um, so. Uh, Biron, you're obviously, you know, I also didn't realize how good block was. Against, <laughs> against that's like that. Dude, that's like on fucking page one. Yeah. Yeah. Block is the best skill in the game, period. After, after you are a coach, block is good. <laughs> yeah. You, you are a coach. Block I didn't read the manual good. because I got Mike to show me off that. <laughs> manual. Motherfucking manual. Yeah. Um, so. But I did appreciate every time I'm like, <laughs> so whenever uh, Brian would tempt to frenzy me into the crowd, I would go down on the first block and I go, ha, I stopped you. Yeah. Oh, my guy's dead. It's a good tactic. It so, is. Uh, frenzy never worked because I was knocked down on the very first yeah. block. He, I mean, he could have picked the uh, the push, though. Yeah. There, there was no push to pick. Oh, either. Yeah. Okay. That's always a fun one. I love yeah. it. I love that. Uh, oh, so- I got dodge and you got the defender stumbles. Fuck it. I'm not going to use dodge. I'm going down. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it was uh, Brian rolled some pretty good block dice against me. But so I'm going bull- to go to extreme now. because I know, I, but I rolled a lot of bullshit dodges to try to get in and strip the ball. So I'm not going to complain. Extreme, give me your kind of like breakdown of this game. The X's uh, and O's, if you will. To start the game, turn one, my death roller knocked over the tree. And then I spent turn two and three surrounding the tree and fouling the tree with my death roller. And on turn three, I killed him. No more tree. So that uh, kind of set the game going in a good direction. It set the and mood. Then, I, then pretty early on, I knocked out a word answer who came back later, but then I knocked him out again. 
so I had some key pieces gone and made it a bit easier. Um, Did the death roller uh, do a lot after the train man, or was that? Yeah, he took out the word answer too. Oh, he did. Okay, wow. And so the, the uh, many, many so, experts said the the amount of bark and sap inside their death roller didn't actually affect. It, it, it acted as lubricant, actually. Yeah, yeah that's great. In, in this game, the death roller had three foul casualties. Wow. So he definitely got his. And then I argued the call when I got caught and passed it. And I argued the call to get kicked out of the game and passed it, which is crazy. That shouldn't happen. Um, so I got him for another drive of killing and destroying. Yeah, no, no bribes, but two successful argue the calls. Yep. Wow. It was, so it, was your, your awesome. lucky day. Yeah. So uh, I think the first half went as expected. And then the second half, uh, we were tied. And Brian started making like crazy dodge rolls. And it reminded me of the Pennsylvania guys and their saying about uh, window lickers rolling sixes. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, I mean, he was doing, and it worked. So that it can't fall, most of it worked. But he was doing like four plus, five plus dodges to get out. Oh, and, he's making hard dodges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, none of this two plus bullshit. So, Biron, did you experiment with leap then? Yes, no? and I think I think we did it right though. Well, there were a couple times where you were leaping away from multiple people where we didn't do it right. Okay, because you take the worst, either yeah. the one you're leaving or the one you're going into. You take the right. worst, and my and you so, get plus one. Yeah. Or just so I'm clear, because um, again, sometimes the old stuff clouds um, used to be leap was no modifiers. Right. You just you go in, which I don't. Why would you change that? That like you're adding time to the game, but mm -hmm. um, it got a little too powerful uh, for word answers leaping into cages. They just say leaps minus one yeah. like to to do it. To yeah. do a leap is minus one. Just say that. Anyway, the idea of now counting up tackle zones before or after. Choosing the yeah, you're doing it harder. twice. Yeah, choosing yeah. the harder of the two, though, right? Yep. Yeah. But now yeah. we know leap pretty well now. Yeah, I still think yeah. it's fun. But while he was doing all these dodges and stuff, I really thought he was going to score, and I was like, "Oh crap! Like he's going to score. I'm going to have enough time to score again, but it's going to be tied." But I was able to turn him over and take the ball. And extreme. Were you thinking? When I talked about that sort of anxiety with play, playing a halfling coach, did you have that playing beer on? Like, <laughs> like if you lost to me, how embarrassing would that like, be? Like, we have to talk about this. <laughs> and like, we record the episode, and you're like, I can't make it tonight. I quit Blood Bowl. <laughs> like, did, no, that, did that go through your mind at all? No, 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 not really. Oh, come on. Because, I, I mean, he was down to like five or six players. So I was like, I, I wasn't stressed. My turns did not take lot. very long. Well, you know, but you, you're right. You wouldn't have lost to him, but you might have tied him. Yeah, it could have possibly been a tie pretty easily had he pulled off this last score in the second half. But he didn't, and I took the ball, and that was kind of the game at that point because I had so many, I had twice as many players on the field as he did. Uh, Biron, did you did you concede or did you play it through? Well, yeah. played, he scored on the very last turn. So oh, the last turn. Out. He wasn't stalling or anything. I can see you conceding on turn seven. Yeah. No, we didn't do that. Like not giving the satisfaction. He still had to make a roll at the end is all I cared about. Yeah. Okay. Extreme. So you did, you loaded up guard. Yep. What was, um, so did you, would you do standard lineup? Two, 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 all that or no? Yeah. Two, 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 five, five blockers and death roller. Okay. Oh, so there was a lot of money. You said there wasn't a lot of money to build that. How'd you it's get not, it? it? Well, it's not a lot compared to a lot of the other tournaments right now. Maybe I'm just oblivious to how much money is truly given away at the new tournaments. <laughs> but I now I, I know how following works I, I didn't like i didn't know like the more guys you surround the higher the bonuses i didn't know any of that so now i do yeah and guard um, works on following too so yep yeah. just saying yeah uh so it's a miracle i still had six guys left in the tournament. uh at this point extreme ends up two wins and a tie someone else has two wins and a tie the Imperial nobility coach that I played. Was oh, so first tiebreaker was you beating him or was it points? First, first tiebreaker was touchdowns and we were tied. So then the next tiebreaker was casualties and I beat him on that. I like my opinion on that is in three game tournaments, I'm just going straight points. I don't want to, I don't even want to do unless you're tied in points. Yeah, we were tied in points. Oh, so there's not, so I guess the, the bonus points weren't really. So when wins and then the second one was was it it wasn't it was 
touchdowns than casualties? Yeah. And, and we were tied in both overall points and touchdowns, so it went to casualties. And you also tied in head to head, too. So, yes. yeah. So, had, had that game gone or different, had I won one to zero, I would have lost. He would have won the tournament. Well, congrats, Extreme. I know and I won, good. I would have won the tournament. Yes. Uh, Extreme, this was your first tournament victory in how long? Um, well, if we count day one of Super Bowl, not that long. Um, cause I had a day uh, one championship. I'm still waiting for a day one uh, award. So I don't think we're counting day ones. If we're not counting it's that. It's a three game tournament. NAF says I didn't win it. If uh, we're not counting that, it's been a long time. Recently, uh, the last few years, it has been its own tournament. So. Okay. Mike, who did you play in game three? I played, uh, Connor. Is that Cameron? Cameron. Was that the Snotlings bullshit list? It was the Snotling. Uh, luckily, it was Snotlings with uh, Hack Flem. And but he was how many uh, pump wagons? Game. What? How many pump wagons? Two, which is, I, I, I got no problem with pump wagons. Well, Snotlings are, I mean, it's a team. Yeah. To take. It was a Snotling with Hack Flem, and he wasn't protecting Hack Flem as well as he should have. Because when you take Snotlings with Hack Flem, Hack Flem is your team, and Snotlings are just there to make him look good. And he kind of wasn't doing that as much as he should have, and I was able to dodge in and do some bullshit, and I was able to follow him and take him out, so that helped. So That's good. My, Mike was being very nice in this, too. I looked over at one point, and he told him not to put Hack Flem on the sidelines. Like, you don't want to put him there. Put him one square yeah. out. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm no. not going to. No, if you're taking star players, you don't get help. <laughs> but he was he was a nice guy and he was he was clearly new to the game. I was like, no, no keep him off that, you know. Can I can extreme, can I ask what, what you would have done? I would have put him in the crowd. Well, you got frenzy too. So you're like, put him one away. <laughs> no, uh, regardless of that. <laughs> extreme sees a star player and yep. his blood blood pressure goes through the fucking roof. You know, I played against Glart in the first round and uh, Helmet Wolf. In the Where second. did you play? Glart. Oh, Glart. Glart. I heard Shart. Glart. <laughs> Glart's the like uh, tough Skaven guy. Yeah, the yeah. fat one. Fat, fat Skaven. Skaven. Okay. Who's good or no? He's okay. I, I don't even know. Four block, so. Oh, straight four block. That's neat. That's your and their mighty Zug, right? Pretty much. Um, well, sort of. That's five now, but Plus yeah. Five, yeah. Um, but um, okay. So star players, just to like recap that, um, Extreme, you faced Glart and, and um, what was the other one you said? Helmet Wolf. Helmet Wolf. For funsies, okay? I, I mean, both of those were fine. I didn't have a problem with either of those. Okay. Uh, Mike faced Hack Flem. Yeah. Uh, no Griff at the tournament? No. Not oh. star either. That's surprising. Yeah, there, there were no doubled up stars either. Every star yeah. was unique. Huh. Biron, did you face any? Uh, it's deep basically root. No, deep root. No, oh, no, deep no. deep kind of root standard for a halfling team, right. though. I mean, yeah. And I lost him on turn two against in the second game against the ogre, so that sucked. <laughs> a halfling players. came up and just into just on his own took a shit on him, and uh, that was it. So star player standard, Mike. Yeah, mm -hmm. on a halfling team. Yeah, I mean. You're getting that tier three skill bonus, just saying. Uh -huh. And you get the, you have to play halflings pressure. It almost, war dancers almost feel like star players. They fucking are, yeah. They are. But they're not, but how come, then what else aren't always, they're not always top table or top winning. They're one of the better teams, but right. not, yeah. a, not I, always I think top. If you were uh, maybe across the pond, you might see what else more. Um, in America, Biron, more bashy. We like to fight. Yeah, yeah. We America is more bashy. We fight here. Um, we there's. I mean, you know, there's probably a. I can't play what else. Like, there's a level of American like. Like what else are pussy? Yeah. yeah. You know, if you paint them pink. Yeah. Fucking eBay listing said they're gay. It's like because they're pink. Like that's that's the country we live in, Biron. I painted mine. Uh, the, the final 
when we get to like the final standings and stuff, there were six awards. And because the tournament organizer was playing, there's only seven people eligible for these six awards. So, so I guess we're there now. So what, yeah. let's run, run it down. So I won the tournament. Yep. I got my cool medal. It says great job. It, it says does. great job. No, no, Brian, you came in first. I would argue that I won great. the tournament. And I thought said great Joby. Great Joby. Job. And who's second place? Uh, Imperial nobility. Imperial player. nobility. Yeah. Yamarama was his NAF name. Okay. And third, Mike. Do you have the standings up? No. <laughs> I oh, I have an app. I could look it up on the app. Oh, you have an application. I do have an application. You have a telephone application. We have not talked about the app yet. I'm yeah. sure. It worked out really well. Like yes. so, extreme. I have to admit, I was wrong. The app worked out well. Extreme. Yes, describe wrong. what this this whole thing was about. So we were using Tour Play, which is designed for leagues, but made it work for this tournament. Um, and I never used it before. I, putting the team in was kind of weird, but I got through that. And the first game, I, I don't know, like the first half probably, it was fine. It's the same as putting tally marks on a piece of paper. You're just doing it on an app. And it directly went to the TO and you could see everyone else's scores live, which is kind of cool. And if you're into that. And then uh, once he hits the new round, the matchups pop up on the app and you're ready to go. Yes, and this is cool. You could, so the 40 Miners, uh, one with 25 points, uh, tied but one on tie break against the Imperial Nobility team. They got second. Third went to Apple Boys All-Stars, played by Val. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. And but he didn't take points. third place because he took uh, Stunny. I will Stunny, right. Stunny. There was, and there was no third place medal. There was only first and second. Oh. Um, and that because fourth place went to the Bussywood Dandies, played by me. Fourth place, uh -huh. top half. So in the top in the top four spots, three of them were Zerk, Zerk cast. Oh. I, apparently, we're doing fourth place now. Well, I'm just and saying there was a, no a most of eight. touchdowns award, but you got it right. There was no t most touchdowns award, but I had most touchdowns. And I actually gave that to you on the NAF site. So oh, nice. oh. yeah, I, I went. It's one of the listings, so why not? Yeah. That's is fourth place in there, Mike, or no? No. <laughs> So beer on points isn't in there, but take credit for the one that exists. Those no, I'm just I just want to I don't care about the, the place. I care about of the first four spots, we had three of them. Yes. We took our straw and sent it all <laughs> the way over to Bloomington and drank their milkshake. Yeah. So of the, the so we had six awards for seven players. So there's one person that wasn't gonna get an award, and it was Brian. Yes. But he got the best award. Yes. Because I got the door prize of the Norse team. Yes. Awesome. And all this time you're asking Todd, N E Norse. Yes. We're and of course, no engagement on that. No, no, except for me saying call the store. Wow. Right. Um, but, and how, how weird that you can't buy the team from your home local store. Uh -huh. And yet you were given it for free at another town's local store that clearly has a much smaller GW presence than Grotter. Yeah. And I mean, does that, should Todd take notice of this? Like, uh, if it's not magic or 40 K, he doesn't give a shit. He knows. But he also got it on Wednesday. So, yeah. cause I bought my Norse team. And I sent it on Wednesday because I'm courteous. I sent a note to the store manager of Grotter saying, I no longer need that held for me because I want it at the event. And they're saying thing, and they reply, "Thanks for being loyal." Yeah, <laughs> but they will gladly sell to somebody else and yeah. make someone else happy. So they will gladly give you pay you Tuesday for some notes today. If but you, also, yeah. they had at the store they had the full line of the speed paints. Yes, that was nice. Yeah, what is, what a is, lot of that stuff. Quick. What is that? The army painter version of contrast. Yes. Oh, it's called speed paint. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Supposed to have what higher more pigment in it? It's got more pigment, but it comes in small. It comes in dropper bottles, so and it's cheaper. Yeah, it's it like, is cheaper. 
but it's also smaller bottles. So I don't know if the price per ounce is the same or not. But I yeah, and I do like the GW good. bottles for contrast because you just go right out the bottle. Yeah, you it's just hard. dip that brush it and just slather it on. But which I will do with the speed paints. I'm gonna pop the top off and stick my brush in and slather. Less chance for a, a spill in those, probably. In yeah. the speed paints, there's probably more chance. But well, you, if you put it on you a dropper bottle, yeah. Because the should, GW, I actually got the the little plastic thing, the rubber thing that I put the pots in to keep oh, wow. keep it from You're spilling, annoying. which You're looks annoying. stupid as hell, but it works really well. So, yeah. Um, so. Um, you mentioned about the app extreme. This was a, a required thing to submit your roster in it. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Tour play. Yeah. Dot net. The app, the app is really good, but it's not set up for tournaments yet. But with just a few tweaks, and I think it's going to be really good. Do you think uh, I love it? No. This will become standard because I I didn't get to you know I didn't go, so I'm not used to using it. I don't think I want people on their phones all day. Well, you're not really on your phone. You're only on your phone when, like, some, you're marking something. It'd be the same as, like, marking Cavaliers and touchdowns. Oh, that was, wasn't yeah. that, like, the roster? Like, you know, I guess but we I printed look. out my roster anyway. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's really it, just for submitting stats. I guess if people didn't bring their roster and you wanted to look at the roster, you're looking at your phone. Yeah. But, yeah, you I, just, I, like, I you score a touchdown, you say what player got it, and you hit save. Or I think it's going to be most useful for larger tournaments. For smaller tournaments, I think you're still better off using. Yeah, it's a little overkill, but it's great because the the TO just, all right, he's got an it zaps to his thing and he sees everything. So yeah, and it does the matchups automatically. I think you're like Swiss pairing, boom, go. That's cool. I want to be able to set up my friends to play each other though. Yeah. Well, that was an issue at like the the NAF. What is that World Cup? is e even if because there's so many games that there's just physically not enough time to enter all the scores into into score or anything like that so they had multiple people like multiple people as well yeah. and this would have saved so much time like it's just yeah automatic. well they actually had an app developed for it too so you just well, entered it there i could see this being more common going forward yeah i really can too hmm. i was thoroughly against it until I got to the tournament and used it and said, oh, this is nice. Yeah. Once I was shown what to do, it, it worked well. And if you finish all your games early, as I tend to do, it's kind of fun because you can open up and see how everyone else is doing. Yeah. Yep. And what's going on. Maybe one day we'll play Blood Bowl not on a pitch, but a giant iPad. No. That's called a video game. So It's called Fun Bowl. Drive, drive, drive three hours to play a video game. Yeah. So also it does have a slight disadvantage of if you're a power gamer, you can look at the rosters ahead of time yep. and say, Oh, there's a lot of yeah, whatever the, I'm gonna bring. I thought you were supposed to submit it before. You right. Were. And then but we you could but, we could see who's playing what and all the skills they took and everything online yeah. before the game starts. Yeah. So so it incentivizes you to be the last person to sign right. yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah. And, we all submit our rosters at eleven fifty nine. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, some way of turning that off would be good, too. The, yeah. the big worry I have with bigger tournaments is it exporting a file that the NAF can upload. Yeah. Um, so that needs to – there, there's just a few things to get it ready for tournaments, but it's really close. It's, it was good. Yeah, yeah, like the fact you can't enter your skills, the TO has to. You have to tell them what skills on what players. So they still get that overview of make sure, make sure you're you not don't. cheating your balls off. Yeah. And, and the inducements you had to like select your star player each game. So like the Imperial Nobility player, I was looking at the roster on my app and it didn't have Helmet Wolf on it. And he handed me a piece of paper with Helmet Wolf on it. I was like, You're like, what, what the fuck hell? is this? <laughs> and there was a little bit because like my third game opponent, his roster was like 10K less than the max. So theoretically I didn't have enough inducements to buy uh deep root yeah why because he had because if it was if he had the full whatever 1.1 million i would have had enough but because he had 1.05 it wasn't that's, that's a league rule. that's not a tournament rule yeah because no, well, but the app is the because app it's is designed, designed for leagues not tournaments yeah oh okay yeah so i just put in uh frankenstein or whatever and it was fine but you know 
Yeah, it's clearly it only has a section for league. So is there yeah. anything like you know how we always talk about um, like when you finish your game, you uh, some people sign off like with their opponent or they walk up together. Yeah. Was there an issue with different like a we mark different yeah. things? Because you can see the score and the casualty count on your app the whole time, so you know yeah. if they messed up. No, but I'm saying who who who's it? Extreme. You and I are playing. You, you both mark, review it and you both hit submit at okay. the end of the game. That's what I was yeah. saying. You mark casualty. I forget to mark it. Like, you know. No, well, no. Oh, Extreme oh, would oh, mark oh. his own casualty, and that goes into the total. Oh, okay. You mark your own. Casualty. So in theory, he could mark three casualties, and if you didn't notice it. That's on you, but and I don't see anyone doing it on purpose. I, I do no, see fat, fat fingers, but you know, yeah. And I don't know how you take away stuff. I don't know how that worked because I never did that. But yeah, and I didn't really do injuries. Like you were responsible for your own injuries, but it's like yeah, I, fuck that yeah. resurrection, yo. I didn't get the whole injury thing either, but I was like, I didn't track. <laughs> I didn't either. Was there like an award for like real kills or no? <laughs> there was an award for. Uh, casualties by foul there was yeah okay there's i think that was at the top of that list too but since you won first yeah, you won no. the next guy i think that was the ogre team won that i think yeah okay yeah that's right yeah well, which she deserved because he took deep root out <laughs> overall you guys had a good time oh yeah i had a great time yeah it was, it was pretty awesome and so we're in the basement. Uh, one of the tables next to us, uh, one of the store employees, yeah, is running uh, Dungeons and Dragons intro events, and she, I think she did like two or three separate groups of that. Yeah, she was a hustler, man. She was all right. Now what you got to buy is this. Here, I'll take you up to the thing. You can buy. This. I was actually like, I want to play with her. You yeah. know, she was awesome. So he was she, sell, she was selling those starter kits left and right. Yeah. Talk to she a customer or an employee? Employee. Okay. Yeah. It was I was. I thought she was just people. running a league, but I was like, no, she's explaining the game to them, and I was like, oh, she's doing demos, and that was great. Yeah. Yeah. The people playing were obviously playing for the first time. They were yeah. asking. Yeah. It's like, what's the hit point? <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't have any. Don't worry about it. Yeah. You have one. So. <laughs> you guys jumped in that game or no? No. <laughs> You're like, listen, I gotta go eat. Yeah, yeah it's been a while. Some wieners. Eat some, yeah, we need a Windy City wieners. So. Eat some wieners. Uh, so nice. Uh, so extreme. You drove back same night then too. Yep. Oh, you said midnight. You didn't get back till midnight. Yeah. And you got you guys, Mike and Brian, eleven o'clock then. Was it? Late yeah, night? I got back at like nine fifteen. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Mike drove back and. He, he enjoyed the Swedish power and the smooth acceleration of the boat. I did, and we only stopped for a pee break once, so. And, but we stopped at the sketchiest bathroom we could find. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, I, I hate, like, when oh. you're driving back from Blood Bowl tournaments, it's like, you know, if I'm going somewhere, I'll think, I'm not going to drink a lot. I don't want to have to pee. But when you're at a thing, a con or whatever, you're just down and pops like a motherfucker. And all of a sudden, it's like, all right, you're going to pay for that. Well, my BP meds change and it make me pee like 10 times more than normal. And speaking of bathrooms, the bathroom at the game store was pretty awesome. It yeah, was, it was, there was always something interesting to look at. Yes. It was very, Full of very like clean. comic stuff and Star yeah. Wars stuff. It was, it was almost like, and it was like mood, mood lighting going on or something. Yeah. It was very nice. That was the nicest game store bathroom I've ever seen. Was it like stuff to read for peeing or pooping? Yes. Yeah. There was just right. tons of stuff everywhere to look at. I wanted to hang out in there for a while yeah. and just enjoy all the. It had like one of those Edison style light bulbs in the in the lamp. I think you know those. Yeah, things. the green one. Yeah, so it's like so it's not super bright in there, but you don't need any more lighting because you're just shitting or pissing. But it was nice. It was a very relaxing environment. Was it a uh, like unisex? Yes, it was. Yes. The only and I went up there once, and I was waiting, and then two people came out of the bathroom, and I'm like, okay, it is a very progressive store. <laughs> It was. I'm like, you do you. So yeah. yeah. Wait, but is how many toilets? Just one. One. So what was happening? I <laughs> didn't ask. It smelled fine, so I'm like, okay. I'm like the basement. Yeah. Basement had a little musty cat pee smell. 
Hmm. It did. Not overpowering, but it was there. I wonder, do you think like when a game store has female employees, the bathrooms are nicer? Probably. Yes. Because they're like, I'm not going to stand for this. Right. Like, yeah. You, I'm not gonna if it's a that. unisex bathroom, yes. If they're separate male and female, <laughs> the male bathroom will be unattended because they're like, I'm not I'm fucking not, cleaning that. Or if yeah, it's I'm a one cute. person bathroom that has a toilet and a urinal, Mike and I will use it at the same time. Yes. You're supposed to, right? Well, there's yeah. no walls or anything on the toilet. Yeah, but why would you have two different places to go if it wasn't intended to be used? Byron sits down, he spreads his legs, I pee between them, yep. and it oh, works. I see, I shit in the urinal. That's my, <laughs> my back all wet. Right, that's my thing. Like, there's a drain. Yeah, it'll eventually go down. People it'll eventually break it down just, with their pee stream. No, because you're gonna yeah, you're gonna pee it down. Like you know, yeah. like breakout on Atari. <laughs> and you fucking whittle away at it. Was yeah. that breakout? Was that the game? Yeah, breakout. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Um, so at this point, um, Biron, you're still all in on the game of Blood Bowl. Yeah, I, I had more, I did better than I thought I would by far, and I had more fun than I thought. I would. All right. Well, it was helped by playing two of my games versus one versus Mike Learn with Brian. But. Yeah. Chaos Cup will be the real test. Yeah. Chaos Cup will be the test. It was a pretty good crew, though. So you, you would have been fine, right, with randoms? Yeah. I, the one random I played was good. Um, they were a lot younger crowd. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, when you're a dinosaur, everybody's young. Yeah, that's true. So, chaos think, yeah, all of the other five people that were there, none of them seemed. They all seemed cool. So, yeah, that's I awesome. think it was. I think Mike's the oldest. I was the second oldest, and Extreme was the third oldest of the crew. Oh wow! Well, dinosaurs. What can yeah. You say? Uh, yeah, Biron. When you go to Chaos Cup, that's the real test. Yeah. Please, I don't think he's sweet or something. And I don't think Jeffro is going to hook you up in round one either, like we would have. No, no I scores, think you're going to get what score gives you. And... No, like round one, though, you get, you, you know, round one. Or is a pain in the ass to change it, though? It's too much work. Just keep hitting randomized till we get what we want. Right, over and over again. <laughs> but then once I get my matchup, then I don't want to hit randomized just for you to get yours. You know? well, I used to do that. Uh last round at slurpee cup where i changed every match that was always a blast oh yeah that was that I, was actually when you first said that i was like i like that because it just doesn't fucking matter yeah biron he did um last round was a grudge match yeah and the idea was classic dwarf move yeah totally the idea was like either i mean there was no like rules but it was sort of it let people either make a challenge if they were talking shit on the old message boards mm -hmm. or whatever or if there's just friendly rivalry we always play or we're playing the same team it let you kind of do i mean there was of course the matchmaking side where people are like oh, i don't have any friends you know i, I want most casualty so i'm play the halfling player oh yeah i forgot that people did that yeah i was oh, trying to watch out for that a lot and there were a couple matchups where i said no you say, fuck else. you you're playing nurgle well, <laughs> Didn't you fix that by making you pick your opponent before the tournament starts? Like when you register, put yes. who you. That's a lot of work. Yeah, but what if you played them early in the round and you had to play them a second time? That's true. Yeah. yeah. What you do is you just let the system pick the final round and just go walk around like, nope, you're playing him. Nope, you're playing him. <laughs> You do that. I'm deciding who everyone's playing. Yep. Yeah. I will create the grudges. I'm writing the book now. We <laughs> are the ones that are the grudge lickers. Yeah, we yeah. are. The, we are the grudge bearers. <laughs> so, but so, post game talk. So I know I, I, I mark players too often with my wood elves. Is the proper thing just when you're trying to prevent them from scoring, you just have to kind of set up a wall and make them come to you. It's, it's called the umbrella. You're yeah, one okay. square away. I call it a net. Yeah, yeah. it's the same thing. Yeah, I same call thing. it one score away without a. And just trust that no, your word yeah. answer can leap in and get do some bullshit, and then. Yeah, always trust yeah. your word answer will do bullshit. So, I mean, That's if you think about right. it, Biron, if you go with the one square philosophy, there's thirteen squares. So, who's getting to the end zone if everything works in your favor? Mm -hmm. No one. So you're you're forcing them to pick their blitz, and then on your turn, like you're trying to use your blitz as like a scalpel. You're picking yeah, your counterattack type. Yeah. Again, it's all in theory because anything can happen. But you know, well, I was playing two LFF legends. Um, yeah. We are all stars. Yeah. Are they legends by definition or by just 
Uh, uh, the creator of the game identified them as such. Yes. Who said that? Steve Resk. He Steve commented Resk. on our Oh, board. LFF. I thought you said Yeah, LFF. LFF. Yeah. Oh, they're Three not. Of the four of us are Hall of Famers. So, right. LFF. Think... Sorry. I heard NAF. And oh. I'm like, these guys aren't NAF legends. <laughs> Mike, well, are you? Of us are. Are you, Mike? Yeah. It depends on how you define a legend. They define it by the fucking word on my patch. Um, yeah. I well, got you were there, those. so. I actually have two of those because I saw Frank's. But nice. I like this little nub here. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, it's like a, a hanging out. Right, totally. It's like a thanks, guys. Oh, it's never <laughs> going anywhere. Do you have the other That's... two patches too? Uh, I don't have that's the only one I have. What are the other ones? 26, 28? No, it's the the Bretonian and the Well, yeah, but they didn't put 26 for that one? No, they just gave you two extra patches, like merit badges. Oh, to add on to it. They didn't want to make yeah. it out. like to put it on. And like then the they said, fuck it, there's other teams coming out. And yeah, then that's, became that's digital the patches. Mm-hmm. Fuck up my Which I don't blame them because it's a pain in the ass to give all this shit out. So So my Wood Elf record is one one and one on that. Hey. Hey, guess what, Biron? You're a better Wood Elf coach than I was. You should retire them. I, I, think play I, them again. One, I think I have one win less than my loss column. So it was one, one of those things where this always happens, I think, with Elf. Wow. It's like you play and you kick ass, and then there's that one tournament where it's just like, why did I even show up? Everything's ruined. It'll, it'll happen. I hope it doesn't happen, but for you. It'll happen in Chaos Cup, I'm sure. I'll be playing some European and who's won it 10 times. And get, and so one. Let me ask you guys, um, you know, because I, I posted the other day on Zlurpcast discussion, our Facebook group, which you should join if you're not in it, um, a throwback to the Chaos Cup showdown. Because we used to do um, like whoever had a podcast, uh, would, their records would count and it was like a tracking thing for it. Um, any chance of that? Is that stuff? I mean, I know we don't have a by definition a blood bowl podcast but does that still go on mike do you, you know of like tracking like you know some Freedom type lock of, and like, like a game within a game how extreme used to do the team tournament at slurpee bowl does that still go on a chaos cup or no no okay never mind then i never Not that i know of, no it's too much work what extreme i never really cared about it anyway I don't know. Did you listen to that podcast again? I did. That's where I, you were. You and that Canadian guy were going at. You're like, you're on the fucking bottom tables. Like you were. Was that was that angry drunk extreme in that one? Yeah, I know. I loved it. That, that kind of <laughs> shit turns me on. I love it. Was that no, at the was, house? No, this was uh, this was at Chaos Cup 2014. Oh, now, when we had all yeah, after, Mike, you were helping Jeremy like with the announcements and like yeah, the yeah, show. yeah. And the Canadian guy was was bugging Extreme, and he got under his skin. And then he let Extreme, you let him have it. You're like, yeah, he's like, go suck a dick, bottom tables, you know that kind of stuff. I loved it. So I, I could expect that from Extreme at Cast Cup. Get a couple of pops in him, maybe. You know? <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll be allowed to drink by the time Chaos Cup comes around, so we'll see. Yeah, I think it's gonna be great. Yeah, your uh, tolerance will be shit, so that'll yep. be good. So yeah. <laughs> You know, um, one rolling rock and you'll be on the ground. <laughs> Before we go, we have some shout outs we need to make sure we get to. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And they are? Uh, well, I have a personal one. And then we have Grant's tournament, uh, the Brew House Brawl. Is that right? I think Is that so. the Galena one? You're going to sh- you're gonna want to check your phone on this one. It's brew house something because in between the blood bowl rounds you play the brew house game that was in the white dwarf magazine but he has it set up so you play it's a faster version of it brew house um, bash i believe brew house bash okay um and whoever wins the fight in between rounds gets a skill on that player to add uh for a tournament going forward so it's a pretty cool concept uh, uh, i didn't know about that wow it's going down in uh waterloo canada somewhere in canada I think it all matters. It's a Canada. small country, right? I mean, just drive. <laughs> yeah, but everything is within 80 miles of the U.S. border that matters. Yeah. Listen, I wish them the best. It's the same day as Three Die Brawl in my area, so I will not be going to Canada that day. Because um, I think we can go to Canada now, right? Yes. 
Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Biram. No, are you can, going to die for all? Let us come home. I think, Biron, if you're going for work, you, you know, you can say it's for work. Yeah. That's allowed. What What is work? Don't worry about it. Then you're, it's classified. Yeah. Not as a work or as a goof. I don't believe you can go. Um, so that is the first shout out, Grant's Tournament. So if you are in the, uh, you know, the region, the, the northern U.S. states, you want to take a trip. If you're across the Tim Hortons, Dunkin' Donuts border. Yeah. Take yeah. a trip over. You can do that. And have a good time. Grant's a good uh Biron would say he's one of the good ones. You know? He's a good he's a good egg. Yeah. He uh got bit at Zorpy Bowl, so that was fun. Yeah, yeah. By Tom? Yeah. As a tournament organizer, that's something that you get to look forward to dealing yeah, Tom, with. Tom Tom Rummery bit bit him in the leg, I think. Yeah. They were wrestling on your like living room floor, I believe. Yep. Like, you know. We're, we're out here trying to have a, a good time. I'm trying to learn dread ball, even though I'm not getting it. You know, I'm trying to just have fun. Extreme's doing his host with the most routine. We're doing some dead zone, I think, at the same time. And all of a sudden, we look over there, and there is a Canadian uh, fair-skinned man's thigh inside an angry Ohioan's mouth. And that's just not cool. You know? Did you have Eventually, to turn the hose on him? Yeah. You know what? One thing leads to another and you got tape all over your face. That's what happens, you know? And um, uh, other shout outs, Extreme? Uh, yeah. So there's something that I've wanted since 2004. It was given away at a tournament and it's always been in my mind and thought of it. Uh, and I mentioned it to Jimmy uh, recently and she reached out to Ethan to get it and he sent it over. And it's this awesome, super glary, Death Roller oh. artwork. That was what? the perspective of our entire game. How did he get that? So this was a Underworld Cup 04. I'm going to skip a lot of details. I was screwed pretty bad at this tournament. So a lot of negative feelings here. But uh, it was on the prize table and Ethan got it. And it, I always remembered it. So it was the one prize that I wanted. Oh, my God. You've had that eating away at you for six, 18 years. 18 yeah. years? Wow. <laughs> Is that Ethan Rippin? Fraud? Yes. Yep. Oh, oh, wow. And, nice. and, and your lovely wife said, I'm going to get this for, for my husband. Yeah, because I, I never wanted to ask him for it because I was afraid he'd be like, oh, yeah, I thumbtacked it to the wall years ago and then kind of threw oh, it. Oh, you didn't want to know, him. like, um, yeah. like, yeah, you know. It said nothing to me and everything. I, what, I, I fucking took the poster and, um, you know, I, I, I rolled a joint out of it. It's gone. My I'm kid sorry. took it and drew a swastika with Sharpie on it. Right. <laughs> but she reached out to him and he was like super excited and grace and didn't want any money for it or anything just sipped it over so it's it's really awesome i'm yeah. very grateful i'm gonna put it yeah. on my wall and he said uh, have it you can have it you can have it he said tell him you can have it but i want one more match <laughs> <laughs> i want i want one me and him one more match no holds barred what else versus dwarves it'll it'll be there what was yeah. ripon's like main team what else Oh, he was? Okay. Well, I the most was... touchdowns at Chaos Cup like three times in a oh, row. Really? I always knew him as a Chaos coach back in the day. I don't know why. Played, I think, he, didn't he play Goblins for a while too? Yeah, he played Goblins a little bit, but he when he plays Wood Elves, he gets most touchdowns a lot. Yeah. Does he still go to Chaos Cup? Uh, he didn't go last year because of uh, <clears throat> vaccines, but uh, mm. uh, maybe this year. Is this year should be open to everybody because I still want to get. I think we've got it before, but I want to get a picture with me, Dean, and Ethan because he looks just like my other brother, Dan. Exactly. I think we got one really? before, but not, not exactly. Like it's unbelievably uncanny. And so I would like to see that because I always, I've never met your other brother, but I would assume he was. I still don't believe he exists. No, he exists. Um, they're there. And Ethan is the uh, Blood Bowl version of him. So oh, wow. yeah, okay. I, I want to see Ethan again, though. It's been a long time since I've seen him. Yeah, so. He's a good guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's uh, again three-digit NAF number. Yeah, I think low, was... lower than yours, even. What? <laughs> lower than mine? I thought one fifty-four was like the beginning. Like you know when no. you get, when you first get a checkbook, and they're like, "We're not going to start you at one on the checks because no yeah. one's going to take a one. Let's start yeah. you at one fifty-four." Didn't like, they give num didn't they give number one to Jervis or something? Uh, you know I what I heard? Know. Extreme. He didn't he, pay, what's he, your number, John? I'm 154. Extreme. He He's didn't pay 122. Oh, man. 
Is there any like, is there any like, uh, sort of like in the old days, drag racing playing for pink slips? Can we play for numbers? <laughs> How great would that be, by the way? Grudge match playing for NAF numbers. You used to, there were people that sold their ICQ numbers, low numbers yeah. to people. For I real could see money. that. You know, like if you had beer on at AOL.com, you're like, I'm not letting it go. Cutsluts.com. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you go to cutsluts.com, you go, you get to the Zorpcast channel. Yep. Currently, which is awesome. Super I think useful. the one going to Jervis was more mythology than real. Oh, okay. Because three Urban is. Legends. I mean, I could find out there his number because I played against him. Yeah, you did. There's a picture of that I sent recently, I think. Oh, wow. Okay, let's look that up. Did you beat him? I think Jervis was assigned uh, number one, and then um, he didn't pay his dues and took it away. I gave Jervis his only NAF loss. Really? Well, up until then, you mean? No, total, because he didn't play in the NAF tournament after that. Wow. Because you scared him away? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Well, he played like, Gary too, so. So you were like his Josh Snow. Jervis J. Josh Snow, yeah. Jervis J is his username. Wow. If you want to try to beat I him. thought he was Yo Benny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who's the, the worst player in the world? He's 307, three. actually. Are we, yeah, he's three, 307. Yeah. Are we think it's British people worth more? Uh, well, get nervous. Yeah, they're he was a terrible Blood Bowl player. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, he was. It was. It was. <laughs> it, was it was. It was not good. Like, see, you know, I was like, "Oh, you have an idea of the game, but you're not quite good at playing." Yeah. <laughs> it's just like he had an idea of what American football was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He actually has only one NAF match. And that's Chaos Cup 2008. Yeah, that's it. We took him to Hooters and got him fucked up. And then I told him a spoiler from Curb Your Enthusiasm. You did. Him. He yeah, had like. He Is that like, where he was exposed to elf ball? Yeah, he was there. He had, like, <laughs> he had like three wings, and he's like, oh, I'm stuff. Like three wings. You're not, you're not ready for American portions. No. He had like 10 pints, uh, yeah. but three wings. You know. Well, we've said it all. Feast of the Goblin King. Uh, great tournament. If they do it again, probably a, a recurring thing, maybe. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And um, starting up the, uh, I mean, you know, to some people, you know, we went away for a while, but to others, Blood Bowl didn't go anywhere, right? They were still going to tournaments. Um, there was probably less of them, and then COVID even less of the less. But um, I think we're getting back into that mode of if you want to go to stuff and you got, you know, a couple hundred miles as your radius. You can have a pretty busy summer, you know, and fall eventually. So, um, anything else, guys? Sorry, put, I put together my Norse team and got them primed. Anything for us for the show, Biron? Uh, people like Hobby Corner. <laughs> Hobby Corner? Yeah, my Norse team is still in my car. I haven't even taken it out of the car yet. But... Biron, can you go ahead and cue the intro for Hobby Corner? Hobby Corner. Let's go. Where are we so going? You have your, you're excited to paint your beer boars? I think I will take one. Like I was playing around with lists just because to occupy a spot. But I don't, they don't seem that great to me. Like I'd yeah. rather have a lineman in that spot. No, they're, they're just not. I mean, if you look Again, at the timing of everything, it's not that great. A five they're, plus? They're, no, they're, they're they're best Right. The best use is to uh, be a fowler or to get you to 11 players so you can bring a star. A star. Yep. Norse are tier one, yes? Yeah. Uh, I don't know about that. I think they might be tier two. Now they're tier one, according, according tier, to the roster, they're tier one. I don't so. think you get to start with block on everybody and not be tier one. I mean, they definitely should be tier one, but I thought they were two. And I have the, uh, the star player Yeti guy coming in. I'm just going to use him as a Yeti. But Correct me if I'm wrong, but tier one, the idea is they don't need stuff to start with. Isn't that the, the main point of that? Was the out of the box, they're already good? I guess. Or they're, they, they rank the highest in tournaments. I don't think you should go by real data because it's all the tournaments are all over the place. They're, you know, they're star player based. I don't want real data going. I know it sounds crazy, but I actually don't want 
real data going into rules. But I was I was playing around with the list of like, what if I want to take a Chaos Cup? And I, I don't think I'd take a star player with them because you can't fit it. Take Norse star player. What nope. so a Chaos Cup is 1.1 1. 1 or 1.2? 1. Or 1.15, I think. 1.15 or 125. Either way, I couldn't fit it in. Um, you, you can. You just got to probably have either no rerolls or one reroll, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I, I bought. I have on order the the star player Yeti guy, the fancy lad. But I'll just use his Yeti, and the guy that throws beer barrels. The chaos cut build is an interesting build. Like your teams are, you have to make choices, which is nice, and it kind of decent d de- incentivizes star players which is yeah. nice um so i don't know i'm looking forward to it but I, i'm still afraid that someone's out there smarter than me and found a way to break the system already but we'll see hey you know what and it doesn't matter it's, it's still got to roll dice so yeah. break the system all you want um i i like that the star players are harder to take somebody will find a way to squeeze them in um which i, I don't know i think the i think the idea this final point of this the whole like rules as written rules as intended finding the sneakiest way to sneak in a star player i think is shitty um and so if you as a tournament organizer have to build rules around that you know that's probably what we're getting into right now like i wonder if it's just we should put tears on the star players yeah, or just they kind of did that a little bit like griff and yeah just, yeah, I mean, stuff kind of did, yeah. Just say not allowed. You're done. Fuck it. Don't fuck around with people. Just say they're out. I st- I stuck in a star player on in in this tournament, but I just counted him as a catcher. I just used an <laughs> alternate sculpt. No, oh, that's fine. He still died. Yeah, died like <laughs> the rest. Well, I guess that's about it. Follow online ads, Lurpcast. Uh, subscribe. Ring the bell so you get notified every week. You get a free episode. Free. There's currently no uh, no subscription for this show that you're watching right now. So that's pretty no cool. No paywall. Zero paywall. At, yeah. the, at the moment. Unlike is, the New York Times, we have no paywall. Right? I mean, if you're watching this, you know, this is coming out on uh, May 1st or I don't know, whatever that Saturday is. At the time, nothing. But maybe you're jumping in late. And then it's like, hmm. You're like, you can't hear because you didn't fucking pay. You know, you got to pay to hear the the fun shit. So Uh, until then, take your Kilowagi coin or your Fat Finley coin. He's not called Fat Finley anymore, but he always will be to me. He always will be. And uh, you have yourself a great day and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Brought to you by McMurdy's. Ba da ba ba ba. I'm loathing it.